Hello, welcome to White Baby Gardening and Worm Farm. Today we are going to be discussing garden pests and how we can control them. We are going to be sharing our ideas on what can be used to either repel or kill these pests and it would be very nice if you guys could share your experience of what type of pests you have come across across in your garden and how you have dealt with it and stuff like that. So we're going to be discussing pesticides, we're going to be discussing companion planting and other means of controlling pests in the garden. No, there are hundreds of different type of pests that affect our garden. And some of them can be as large as a deer or even larger. And some of them can be tiny to the point where you can't see them with your naked eyes. But irrespective of what size they are, they can be a threat to our garden. And so we're gonna see how we can best deal with these creatures. Hello, my beautiful sister, how are you? Yes, so we are talking about the garden pests that we know of or that we have encountered personally and what we have done in the past to either control or to get rid of them. You're good. Okay, nice. Yes. So if you have any experience with pests in your garden, then feel free to share what type of pest and how you have overcome the challenge. The thing is with garden pests, especially the insect types, they're always going to be in our gardens. But what is important is being able to control the amount of them that is there because, as you know, the larger variety of pests you have, or the more pests you have, then the more damage is gonna be done to your plants. Now, the reason why I am doing this discussion is for us to share ideas on what we can use to control pests and to make each other aware of the various type of pests that are out there, especially the more popular ones. And Sometimes what one person use might work now and it might not work at another point in time. So by sharing ideas, we are helping each other to be prepared so that in case we end up with an infestation, then we can try one of the various options that are available. Hi, Russell. Play is work, work is play. That is the worm way. <laughs> Hello today. <laughs> How are you? Mr. Busy Man, always busy. And how are those worms of yours doing? Okay, so have you ever made, sorry, what type of pest? have you encountered in your garden and how have you dealt with them? Prior to last year, my garden was pretty pest free, thankfully. <laughs> but last year, as I said before in previous discussions, they decided to overwhelm my garden. So I've had encounters with spider mites, with aphids, with cutworms, with Japanese beetle, 
speaking of Japanese people, there are some beetles that I see as I am moving things that are on the ground like rocks in my yard. And I'm seeing some beetles that I don't know what they are. They don't look like Japanese beetle because they don't have the coloration of Japanese beetle. But there are lots. I see about three different colors. I see bronze, I see black, and I see brown. And I don't know what type of beetles they are, but I'd like to find out and if they're damaging to my crop. Thankfully, they are not very small, so if they're on my crop and they're dangerous, I can see them pretty easily. Yes, but back to the point of um, types of pests that you have encountered in your garden. So there are many different options when it comes to dealing with pests and that is why I'm doing this discussion because I'd like to know some of your experience and what you are using and share some of my experience and what I am using. So no reply, I guess everybody is either busy or they haven't had any experience with pests. Okay, no worries. Yeah, so um, last year I tried, there are three methods that I used to control pests in my garden. Uh, I was using a garlic solution and that worked for a period of time. It depends on the type of pests that I'm dealing with. And then I, I used store-bought store -bought, um, pesticide. That didn't work out so well for my plants. My plants got burnt. And I used diatomaceous earth as well. So let's see. Russell says, Japanese beetle have been using pheromone straw. Thinking of trying milky spores okay pheromone traps what type of pheromones um pheromone traps did you use um russell because i'm not certain my japanese the japanese beetle not my japanese beetle i'm not certain they won't come back so i'd like to know what type of pheromone traps you use because the thing is when it comes to using pesticide whatever type i don't like to use the same thing every year i like to rotate it because over time pests can get accustomed to the pesticides that we are using and that is one of the purpose for this life so that we can share ideas and have various options various alternatives that we can use so that these pests won't get the chance to get accustomed to what we're using. Let's see. And why it says she had aphids and white flies. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to be looking at companion planting and what we can use to repel some of the most popular pests. And we're going to be looking at pesticides and we're going to be looking at also products that can be used and store bought. Okay, you use spe spectracide bug above Japanese beetle trap. Okay, uh, let me just jot that down. Okay. Yes, the diatomaceous earth really worked well for the Japanese beetle. I didn't try anything else with them, just the diatomaceous earth. And in no time, I think it was about a week or two, I didn't have any of them remaining on my plants. I don't know if maybe their eggs survived because it was getting pretty close to the end of the growing season at that point in time when I 
treated the plants for it so i don't know if any of their eggs or whatever it is that they lay <laughs> whatever method they use to reproduce if anything remains but that works pretty well okay so and white what did you use for your aphids and your white flies i've never had any issues with white flies but i had quite a bit of aphids last year and when my garlic solution stopped working i guess they got used to it because over the years if i see anything that looks like it might be a pest then my garlic solution would be the first thing i go to so i guess they must have gotten used to it so it stopped working so i went to the diatomaceous earth for those aphids as well and it worked pretty well i used the garlic solution you told me about oh, okay okay good So I guess that answered the next question then, Han White, that I was about to ask, which is, have you guys ever made your own pesticide? And if so, do you care to share how you make it? There are so many pesticides, homemade pesticides out there that we can make. And as we go further into the discussion, I'm going to be sharing some of them that are pretty popular to some and some that might not be so popular like for example the stinging nettle a lot of people use it for for fertilizer but they are not aware that it is also a very good pesticide and the so the stinging nettle you can crush it and soak it in water similar to how you would make your nettle fertilizer but then you're going to be adding a little bit of a few drops of dishwashing soap and spray it onto the plants after you have allowed it to steep for a while so stinging nettle is a very good pesticide What about larger pests like rabbits and squirrels and deers? Have you ever had problems with these type of pests? I've had issues with rabbits. Last year, I think, was the first time I've had any problems with large pests. The rabbits, for whatever reason, you take over my garden, they would feast on my beetroot. Unfortunately, the one that was consistent in my yard, he eventually died. I found him dead in my yard and gave him a funeral. But this year I noticed that a pair of rabbits, very nice looking big rabbits, they have taken to my front lawn. So every day they come early in the morning and they would sit underneath the tree and they just sit there looking out and enjoying the sunshine or whatever it is. But every day, every morning, the couple would come there and just sit in the garden. So I don't know if maybe they're going to be going in the backyard into my, not enjoying the garden, but the front lawn. So I don't know if they're going to be going in the backyard to feast on my plants this year. So I'm going to have to put things in place so that if they come in, they won't be able to affect too much of my crop. I wish I had a lot of space. If I had a lot more space, then I would create an, a little area for them where they could actually go and feed and I would just plant food in there for them. But I don't really have much more space. Let's see. Russell says, many years ago, I used sulfur spray that really work. I still have it. Read the warnings and understand this stuff is dangerous and would rather not. Oh, okay. Okay, I've never really heard of that one. So avoid sulfur spray. Okay. 
Let's see. And White says, I had aphids on my chives and parsley a few weeks ago, and I made tea tree oil, and it got rid of them. Okay, nice, nice. But um, <laughs> it's amazing that sometimes chives repel aphids, and other times it doesn't. It's interesting. But then plants that um, attracts some pest also repels others. But it is interesting because chives is supposed to repel aphids. So it's interesting that they're actually affecting your chives. Oh, you've had problems with rabbits, Russell. Yes, these little guys. They're cute. And it's nice to sit and watch them. The one that used to come in my garden last year. I used to call him my gardening companion because he was there every day. If I, when I go out into the backyard, you would see him trying to run away quickly before I see him. Or he would run under whatever is available for him to hide under. So they're cute. I really like them, especially to eat them. <laughs> but... Um, Yes, I didn't, I wasn't able to harvest, to get a good harvest of my beets last year because they just keep coming back and eating the foliage and every time the beet tried to grow back, they would just eat it down. So we'll see what happens with them this year if they're going to be coming into my garden. I know they're going into my backyard over the entire winter because in the snow, I can see where they leave their droppings. And it wasn't just a few droppings. It's a lot of droppings. So I know that they're still going into the backyard. But we'll see what happens with that. So when rabbits, um, what, what method do you use to control rabbits in your garden, Russell? Right, so as I mentioned before, there are plants that are very good repellents for some pests, but then it will attract other pests. And so if you're going to be planting, doing companion planting to repel pests, then you also need to know what type of pest it attracts and then plant other plants to repel those pests. <laughs> So it's a lot of work doing the companion planting to repel pests. Now, some type of pesticides may kill both pests and the beneficial insects. And so it might be a good idea to do research on what beneficial pest the pesticide that you're using will affect. And of course, sometimes you don't really have a choice, even though it's going to be harming the beneficial insects, you still have to use it in order to get them under control and just pray that the damage is not too bad. Okay, the best thing I can do is more fencing. Yes. There are also plants that can be used to repel rabbits. Um, I'm going to be sharing one of them with you shortly. Oh, hi, Melanie. How are you? Now, what are, oh, you're doing great. Okay, good. What are some plants that repel aphids? I also trap them live and take them to my uncle's house. Let them go in his wood while. Nice. That's a nice way of getting them. What do you use for a trap for them? Yeah, it's nice that you have somewhere that you can put them when you catch them so that they are still safe. 
there are so many of them running around in my neighborhood and usually you would see them you would see these rabbits in the winter running around because i guess they're scavenging for food but you would not see them during the summer or in the spring but in recent times i don't know if maybe their population have grown or is it that wherever they used to find food they're not finding food anymore so now they're getting braver and they're running all around the neighborhood in people's yard and, and eating down their garden Just joking about the woodpile part. <laughs> okay. Did you get your sweet potato plants yet? No, I haven't received them yet as yet. I'm wondering if maybe because of the holidays, so things are not moving as quickly as they should, but I haven't received them yet. I'm on the lookout for them though. I have got three varieties of sweet potatoes so far. So with the one that you're gonna give me, the ones I'm getting from you, I'm gonna have four varieties. I actually started creating beds for, the, for them because I have, see, I placed, I have three, four, four containers, four large, like 20 gallon containers outside. So I put them out and fill them with the garden or the potting soil already. And I'm just here waiting for the time to warm up. So we're going to see what happens this year with those sweet potatoes. It's the first, well, it's not the first time I'm planting sweet potatoes. I planted some last year. Uh, I bought the sweet potato, the Jamaican sweet potatoes, and planted them last year. I had just a few slips. I didn't have a lot. I, didn't, I wasn't using the method that I'm using to propagate them this year but i think i started them too late so they didn't really produce anything at all not even a, a tiny speck so we'll see what happens with them this year it will be interesting but then i wish i knew last year that you could actually use the leaves as vegetable because all of that just went to waste well not quite to waste because it went in the compost bin and the worms enjoyed it but if I, if I had known that it could be used as vegetables, then yeah, I would make good use of it. But now I know. So if this year my sweet potatoes don't do so well, I know exactly what to do. <laughs> and then the pest on, on them last year, oh my goodness, the damage was pretty bad too. The aphids were quite terrible. Okay, so what are some plants that aphids, that repels aphids? Marigold, catnip, fennel, dill, cilantro, garlic, onions. These are some of the plants that you can use to repel aphids in your garden. What are some plants that aphids actually love? And these you can use them as a trap crop for, for your aphids. And these, some of these are actually used as repellent for other pests, but they may attract aphids. Let's see. I hope your sweet potatoes do well. Then I will try next season. Okay, thank you, Russell. I had the leaves for the first time last year. How was it? Did it have a sweet potato taste to it or did it have a taste all on its own? Let's see, and why it says chives, they love it. Yeah, okay, yeah, you say that you've been having problems with them on your chives since last year. Oh, hi, Nikki. How are you? Yes, yeah, so some plants that aphids like, and white says they like chives. 
even though chives is supposed to repel them, but you've had issues with that. They like zinnias, they like sunflowers, they like dahlias, cosmos, mustard, nasturtium, and chrysanthemums. So if you're going to be planting chrysanthemum uh, or nasturtium as a repellent for pests, then you might want to throw in some marigold or catnip or whatever other plants you know that repels the aphids because the chrysanthemums and the nasturtium will attract them. You're doing okay, that's good. Very good, Melanie says, eat it all summer. Nice, nice. <laughs> I'm wondering, will I have a lot of foliage these years? My slips are rather small because I cut them off small so that I can get the most out of them. So I don't know. It will be interesting to see what happened with these sweet potatoes, especially in my zone, zone three. Let's see. And why it says, I sowed my nasturtium and marigold and the marigold has germinated. Nice. Let's see, did I do my nasturtium? No, I don't think I did my axe on my nasturtium yet. I did. I didn't do any marigold either. I did um, petunias, but the petunias, they all germinated, or most of them germinated. And I don't know. I followed all the instruction on the package because it's the first time I'm growing it. I followed all the instructions, and they were under grow light because petunias love light. All the plants died except for two, and one is now dying. The next one is looking kind of okay. But from the time that I planted it, from the time they germinated until now, it's been a month, and the plant is not more than half an inch. So I don't really know what's going on with that. Yeah, But I got quite, let's see, what did I plant today? I plant some more flowers that are pest repelling today. Least I saw the seeds. See, see, my brain is getting old. I have problem remembering simple things like that. Oh well, <laughs> I can't remember. And the funny thing is, I just saw the seeds about uh, two hours ago, and I still can't remember. <laughs> Let's see. Um, and White says I saw chrysanthemums too. Oh, okay. LOL sounds like so. Okay. Yes. Um, I haven't saw, I think I, I, I did saw some chrysanthemums. Yes. And I think, I know I saw yesterday, I did some echinacea and chrysanthemums. Was it nasturtium? I don't remember if it was nasturtium, but I saw some other. Oh. Nah, I don't remember. I saw some others today because I realized that some of them, the ones that I saw today, I should have sown them about three weeks ago if you're starting them indoors because they said 10 to 12 weeks before your last frost. So I'm a bit late with those, but that's okay. See, Russell says, went through my peppers and tomato starts yesterday narrow down to one young plant to a cell. Okay, nice. Yes. Uh, all of my seeds that I sowed from up until the third, the third? No, up until the 22nd, 27th, 27th of last month, the vast majority of them has germinated. I'm waiting on a few varieties of my peppers to germinate, but then peppers can take up to 21 days to germinate. So I'm not really concerned about those, but everything else so far, including some of the peppers have germinated. So I'm quite happy about that. The only thing I'm concerned about now is space because my shelves are full of plants and my grow lights are all being used. So I don't, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I've put my scotch bonnet peppers 
the large ones that I had growing from December. I put those out, out in the garage under grow lights because they are three months old, which means that pretty soon they should be, they should start flowering. So I have them under grow lights because they will not flower without grow lights because they have to have either sunlight or the blue lights in order to flower and produce fruits. So I don't know what I'm going to do with all those seedlings, but hopefully I'm hoping that by the time they reach a reasonable height, it will be time for me to transplant them outdoors. Sounds like some of my seedlings not growing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened to those petunias. They just decide not to, not to do anything for me. But I'm hoping that the one that is doing kind of okay, that it will just continue growing because I should not have sown all my seeds at once, but I sowed all of the petunias at the same time. So now I don't have any more seeds. If that one plants do well, then I will just propagate from it. Or if not, then I'll just buy the plants from the store. Let's see. Han White says, all my papers have germinated, but not all have true leaves. I also have been putting them out in the sun too. Okay. It's nice that you're able to put them out in the sun already. My peppers, um, the ones that I planted on the 13th of May, May, <laughs> that was the last year, on the 13th of March, they, and I think the ones that I sowed on the, that I've sown on the 27th of March, they have germinated and they, most of them have true leaves already, but they're under grow lights. So, yeah. My kidney beans haven't germinated, nor my rose cocoa. I don't really know what a rose cocoa is. My kidney beans, the first set that I've sown, they germinate, but as for the ones that I've sown, what, last week or a week ago, um, or two weeks ago, they have not germinated, even though I soaked them overnight they still have not germinated so i don't know what's going on with that but anyway i will try again i started the kidney beans early because i didn't have a lot of them i only have the ones that you sent me Han white and some of them are okay when you soak them they expand and others did not expand the kidney beans that we get here in my regions they will not grow i've tried them many times even soaking them they will not germinate not even once i don't know if maybe they have been treated so that they don't germinate or is it that the beans are too old i don't know what the case is but the beans that we get here they will not germinate so i'm hoping that the ones that i have growing now they're about nine inches or so tall so I'm hoping that they will produce before the growing season starts and mature. And then I can just plant about the beans that I harvested from that. So that is why I started those so early. Oh, rose cocoa peas. You didn't put peas on it, so I'm not familiar with the term rose cocoa. <laughs> yes, um... I won't be sowing any peas and beans apart from the red kidney beans because I really want them to produce so I can get the beans to plant. But I won't be sowing any peas and beans just yet because it's way too early for me to get started on that. I think the earliest I can start is actually in the first or second week in May, just before the last frost. Okay, so what are some plants that repels spider mites? Parsley, chrysanthemums, chives, dill, garlic, and onions. These repel spider mites. Some plants, however, that will attract spider mites 
are fruit trees, beans, gerbera, and the other plants. So beans are so spider mites are attracted to beans. Now what about oh let's see what Melanie says here. I already plant planted all my peas and beans, beets, carrots, turnips, radishes, kales outside. Nice. You must be getting some pretty good weather that you can do that. That's pretty good. Speaking of beets, I need to get some seeds. I don't have any seeds, beet seeds. Just a few. I don't even think I have a dozen and I want a lot of them this year. So, but the beets, I'm so disappointed when you buy a pack of beet seeds because you get something like a dozen in there. What am I doing with a dozen beet seeds? <laughs> I need lots of them. But anyway, this year I have two little, I, um, what you call that? No, regrowing some beets, two of them, with the hope that I'll be able to get seeds from them this year. That way I don't have to buy these sachet with just a few beet seeds in them. Let's see. Okay, you two and white. It's the time to plant all those vegetables in the UK. Okay, nice. Yeah, the, um, anything that we're going to be putting outdoors for the cool weather crop, we can start maybe the last week with just a few plants. You can start with um, in late April or early May, but you can't put anything outdoors in my region before that. Okay. Now, what about homemade pesticides? I mentioned before that stinging nettle can be used to make pesticides for your plants. Baking soda also make a pretty good pesticide. These are direct plants. Okay, yes. I'm going to have to wait before I can plant those outdoors. Let's see. I sold most of them in my mini greenhouse. Oh, okay. Yeah, so baking soda is very good for pesticide. So if you're going to be making a pesticide with baking soda, then you would use two teaspoons of baking soda to a quart of water and one teaspoon of neem oil. And you can use a few drops of liquid detergent and you want to make sure that you're using the eco-friendly type let's see says um russell says worm casting tea make a wonderful pesticides really i know that um worm casting helped to keep some pest away but i never really knew that the tea actually make pest a good pesticides thanks for sharing that I'm going to jot that down so I don't forget with my little brain. I guess I need to add that to my worm casting label. <laughs> Let's see. And why it says, yes, my carrot kills beans, peas, and beets are direct sown. Okay. So, Melanie, what did you think of the label that I sent you um, in terms of design? Is there anything that I need to work on or was it okay? And I want your honest opinion. Not that you're dishonest, but... I'd like your honest opinion on that as that is the first label that I've ever made. So I'd like your honest feedback on that in terms of the design. Because you mentioned that it was easy to read and the instructions are easy to follow. But in terms of the pictures that are used and the layout of it, what do you think about that? Is that okay or do I need to improve on it? 
Yes, so um, another pesticide that you can make at home is neem oil. Now, there are so many different types of neem oil. Some are pure neem oil, and there are some that are not so pure, but I bought the pure one, and oh my goodness, it has a really strong scent. So if you are bothered by scent, then you might not want to use the 100% pure neem oil. But that is one of the reasons why it is so effective too, because the smell alone is enough to repel even humans. <laughs> yes. So for your neem oil, you would get a gallon of water and one tablespoon of neem oil and one tablespoon of insecticide soap. Mix this well and spray it onto your plants. Let's see, on why it says, and I cover them at night because the temperature do drops. Okay, yes, you have to take all the necessary precaution. It would be a shame to plant all those things and then lose them to frost. Speaking of which, I need to keep an eye on my garlic because they are now growing outside the ones that I planted in the fall. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on them, on the weather, so that they don't get damaged because I noticed that some of my scallions started to grow and it got cold one day down to minus 14 overnight and the scallion died. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on the garlic because I don't want that to happen to it. Now for your garlic, you just need to crush garlic. You can crush a whole bulb of garlic in a gallon of water and allow it to steep for a few hours and then spray it onto your plants. Now with any of these homemade pesticides, if you're using them, it is recommended that you spray your plants at least every five to seven days. And the reason that you want to spray your plants every five to seven days is because most of these little pests, they will mature in a short period of time and their eggs keep hatching within five to seven days. So you need to keep spraying as often as possible to keep them under control because no matter what you do you're always going to have these pests in your garden they're always there what is important is the amount of them that is there getting them under control so spray every five to seven days and when you're applying these pesticides you need to ensure that you get to the underside of your leaves because that is where a lot of the pests will hide because they're free they're safer from predators, they're free, they're safer from things in the environment, sunlight and stuff like that. So they like to be on the underside of your plant. So make sure that you get a good spray on that side of your plants. Some of these pests affect the stems of your plants. So you're going to be spraying all of the plants, not just the upper portion or the under portion under leaves, but all of the plant. Let's see. Everything was just fine. You don't need to change anything. As I said, it was easy to read and the instruction was easy to follow. I I will definitely try some of those home remedies. Okay. Uh, thank you, Melanie. Thanks for that review. Okay. No. Cornmeal is also another thing that you can use to repel pests because things like your cutworms and ants, these cannot digest cornmeal. So they will actually feed on it and it swells within them and let them feel as if they're full. And then that will result in them not eating and eventually dying of starvation. Cayenne pepper is also a very good pesticide or pest repellent, it can be used to make a pesticide. So you'd use one tablespoon of 
cayenne pepper with a quart of water and spray it onto your plants. You can also sprinkle cinnamon in your garden because that too is a pretty good repellent. Now, what pest does catnip repel? It repels aphids, beetles, caterpillars, and shield bugs. I don't really know what shield bugs are, though I've never seen them. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it repels aphids, beetles, caterpillars, shield bugs, and other, bug, other pests as well. What about nasturtium? What type of pests do they repel? Nasturtium repels pests, um, pests like aphids, beetles, white flies, caterpillars, and shield bugs, just to name a few. Dill repels caterpillars, aphids, shield bugs, and spider mites. Mint repels aphids, beetles, shield bugs, white flies, and caterpillars. And what about marigold? It repels tomato ornworms, white flies, bad nematodes, and even rabbits. So if you're having a problems with rabbits in your yard, in your garden, then you might want to plant marigold. Let's see, Russell says, Cornmeal is an excellent, excellent worm chow, expensive though. Yes, I know worms do like to eat it, but it is so expensive and it is not easy in my region to find it in large quantity either. But then I don't really believe in buying stuff to feed my worms apart from using and by the diatomaceous earth because of the benefits in the worm bin, not to feed worms. But when it comes to worm food, I don't really believe in buying stuff. Unless, of course, if I had a large commercial entity, then naturally I would probably have to buy stuff to feed them. Now, I mentioned garlic as a good pesticide. So I'm going to be sharing with you how to make a really potent garlic repellent because the ones that i usually use with just the water and the garlic with um, a hint of oil or dishwashing liquid it does work but it is not as potent as this one so if you want to make a really potent mix then you get a bulb of garlic one small onion one teaspoon of cayenne powder and a quart of water and then you're going to crush both the garlic and the onions put it in the water with the cayenne pepper and allow it to steep for at least one hour and after that after allowing it to steep you can steep it for 24 hours but after an hour you should be able to use it but it is more potent if you allow it to stay longer than an hour so after that, after steeping it, then you're going to be adding a few drops of insecticide soap or dishwashing soap to the solution before you use it, just as is the case with any other pesticide. You want to make sure that you test it on a few leaves of different plants and see the effect that it's going to have on your plants because it can be too strong and will damage your plants. So always do a test of whatever pesticide you're using before you cover your plants with it because sometimes the damage can be irreversible. Let's see, and White says, I have mint next to my parsley and chives and it did nothing. The aphids were on it too. Wow interesting are you sure you're having aphids or is, spider, or is it spider mites 
because I know spider mites like chives, but they don't miss. But um, as far as I know, they weren't supposed to like. Spider mites like chives, but aphids were not supposed to like chives. They were supposed to be repelled by chives, so I don't know. Let's see, Melanie says, I am planting cabbage and cauliflower planting. Okay, you're planting cabbage and cauliflower this year and was worried about the white. So thanks for that information. Okay, you are welcome, my dear. They look very similar um, depending on the type that you have. It can be tricky to tell them apart sometimes because you have spider mites that are too spotted and you have aphids that are too spotted. You have spider mites and aphids that are similar in color. One thing that is that makes it a bit easier for you to identify whether it is spider mites or aphids is that spider mites as the name suggests, creates a web. So if you have them and you have large quantities of them and you start seeing a web, then you know that it is definitely spider mites and not aphids. So have you ever seen webbing around these insects? They were green. Spider mites can be green as well. No web, okay. Yes, I'm not sure which of them you have. It would be nice if you could get them under a microscope or at least a magnifying glass and take a picture of them through the magnifying glass and do a research on them to see what they are, if they are the aphids or spider mites. Yes, uh, marigold, what type of pests are attracted to marigold? Because we know it is good as a pest repellent, but every plant has a natural predator. So what type of pest would be attracted to marigold? Snails love marigold. Japanese beetles love marigold and the spider mites love marigold. So if you're planting these, then you need to be on the lookout for these pests if you tend to have these type of pests in your garden. Now, what type of pests are repelled by chrysanthemums? Chrysanthemum can be used to repel things like ticks and fleas. And if you have a large property that has a lot of grass, then ticks and fleas can be a problem. Um, ants and Japanese beetles are repelled by chrysanthemums as well. So you can plant these, but Keep in mind that chrysanthemums attracts aphids. And the reason chrysanthemum is such a good repellent is because it contains a neurotoxin that is called parithrins. Parithrins, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. <laughs> it's P Y R E T H R I N. And this neurotoxin will kill insects, but it will not harm animals. So it's pretty good. In fact, I know I've mentioned this in previous lives before, but chrysanthemums, it also repels mosquitoes, and it is used in a lot of insect repellents that we use on our skin because of this neurotoxin that it contains. So for the chrysanthemums, you can either companion plant it in your garden, or if you uh, to repel insects, you can also use it to make a pesticide by soaking it in water. It's best if you crush it first, in case you get more out of it, if you crush it and then soak it in water, let it steep, and then spray it onto your plants.
so what um so this is all that i have on garden pests for today and how to deal with them but what about you do you have any other method that you use to repel pests in your garden apart from what was mentioned here Okay. <laughs> I'm stretching up my lazy bones. My shoulders are tired. I've been doing a lot of lifting these days. In the past month, I have been outside shoveling snow. Not because it is snowing, but shoveling snow because I'm trying to get the snow to melt quicker. So every year, this time of year, I'd be outside and shoveling snow from the south side of the property to the north side of the property in order to make it melt a little bit quicker so my shoulders are tired. And then I have been working on remodeling my yard. So it is a lot of work trying to get things done. So my shoulders are a bit stiff. Let's see. Um, I search in and pick off what I can. Okay. Yeah. That works too. Or beating them with a hose, high pressure hose, as long as it's not strong enough to damage your plants. But if you're using the high pressure hose to beat them off, it's something that you would have to do quite often, very regularly, because it doesn't really kill them, it just gets them off the plant so that they can do less damage. Okay, so we are approaching close to an hour. So if there are no other comments, then I'm going to be saying goodbye. It was really nice chatting with you guys. I learned quite a bit from you today. So now I have other options that I can use to help repel some of the pests that I've encountered in my garden. Time to make the worm show. Have a great week. Or say to you, Russell, have a lovely week. Yeah, so with that, I'm going to be saying goodbye. Hope to see you again on Friday. And we'll be once again discussing worm farming see bye thanks for all the information you're very welcome melanie i'm tired tonight but i've been listening yes i, I know what that is like i do that quite a lot too <laughs> yes it was nice that you were able to join us even though you're tired so take care everyone uh, have a lovely evening Thank you.